the birds are singing, I'm so hungry, but I have things on my mind, and it's very important to share ideas with others. I've learned so much watching YouTube videos. You have to choose carefully, though. Always check whatever they're telling you. If I tell you something's in the Bible, you check it. If a doctor in a video tells you something regarding your health, you check it. You go to a reputable website, such as a university website, a government website, a famous hospital website, or the National Health Service website, which is in England, which has fantastic information. Anyway, now I forgot what I wanted to say in this video. Yes, yes. Um, most of the world, I'm, I'm not sure if this is correct, but I think most of the world are Christian. Anyway, in the United States here, most of the world, most of the population here uh, claim to be Christian. So, I wanted to name a few things in the Bible that, that are just not done that people do. For instance, of course you find the word peace mentioned frequently in the Bible, just as it's mentioned frequently in the Quran, and just as it's mentioned frequently in the Christian religious book, you know, the Gospels, the Acts of the Apostles, the Letters to the Churches, and the Book of Revelation. The word peace is mentioned a lot. Shalom in Hebrew, Salam in Arabic. So, should we do anything that is not uh, conducive to peace? No. Now, are there any protests in the Bible? No. What do people do in the Bible when they're oppressed, when they're treated bad? They leave or they hide. What did the mother of Moses do when baby Moses was in danger because um, someone ordered to kill newborns because they were afraid a new leader had just been born? So what did she do? She put him in a basket and, um, you know, put tar on the bottom or something so it wouldn't uh, sink into the water. And she put him in the basket. And she had her daughter, you know, just watch to see what happened to him. And, you know, uh, push the basket along so it would flow down the river. So what happened? He survived. So what can we do if we're treated badly? We can move, or we can ignore it, or we could think of it as, well, if I survive this, it's kind of like I'm going to be, you know, strengthened and in a way raised a little bit on my, my spiritual knowledge. There's a story about uh, a man, um, a Jew during World War II. He was in, a, in the boxcar of the train traveling, you know, and um, people without money and, and people who... Uh, some Germans didn't like who the Nazis were persecuting, like this Jewish man. They had to stay in the dirty box car, you know, where the garbage was. So while he was in there, one of the uh, Nazi sh soldiers came there to relieve himself, and and he didn't even he didn't even act like he noticed the man, like like that man is just a piece of garbage there in the corner. And he urinated on top of him. And then he left the box car and went into the better part of the train. And this man had a very different reaction. He felt he wasn't really annoyed. He accepted it. And he felt like, wow, I, I, really, I really can attain humility. And he was like, honored like because the Almighty helped him to be humble and I know this is an extreme story but it's just an example I've read that there's 
three things that suffering accomplishes. It either raises you to the next level, or it pays for your sins so you won't have to pay for them later, or it teaches you very valuable lessons. Now, I've been alone in this house since 2014, and the most, the most extremely important things in my entire life I learned here. Not because of where I am, but because I'm alone. I don't have to take care of anyone. I take care of the house, the yard, the dog. But I can just concentrate on studying, studying spiritual things, um, trying to follow as many commandments as possible, especially with agriculture. There's, uh, I don't know how you could follow many of the commandments because so many of them are related to agriculture. And we're supposed to be close to nature. And the Almighty's words are in his books, but his acts, his actions are in nature. I mean, constantly, constantly happening. You know, as I look out the window, the birds and, and the, the wind blowing the, the leaves, and it's just magnificent. So when you're suffering, and you know, that could be a heartache, it could be a physical suffering, it could be fear from what's going on in the world, um, think of it as, you know, you're getting refined, you're getting stronger. And uh, I'm, I'm a witness. Um, I don't know how much less my life would be if I hadn't discovered those things while I'm in this house alone. And I don't like to be alone, but it's so good for us. Think of the prophets in the Bible. Weren't they alone? Didn't they live separate from the population? Sometimes a few of them lived together, you know, with their students, you know, the prophets to be. And I don't think the people wanted to be around them because the prophets were always telling them what they were doing wrong and warning them. So they stayed by themselves. Maybe they came on the new moon, on the holiday, when they had an inspirational thought from the message from the Almighty and they had to announce something to the people. That's when they did show up. The people got nervous. You know, have you come in peace? <laughs> you know, so... Um, life, life is so, so strange to have a spirit that we have and, and to be in this body, which is so physical. It's just very strange. It must be some magnificent test or, or learning experience. Think about that. And some of the people who, you know, in history that have suffered so much, I mean, they accomplished so much also. And they've learned how to love their enemies. And I think that's by just feeling sorrow for them because enemies are usually clueless. Uh, they don't understand you. Um, they're jealous of you, whatever. And even though um, there are harmful people, you can love them, but just make sure you love them from a distance, a great distance.